Hi and welcome back. So a collaborative study between researchers in Brazil and in the UK has looked at two physical traits that when combined have a negative effect on an old person's walking speed. This then translates into problems with balance and also mobility. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this new study has got to offer. This is a review of a study that was penned by Maria Fernandez Ziegler, which looked into a study that was published in the journal Age and Aging, which investigated two physical traits in older people that can contribute to a loss of gait speed, which can lead to a reduction in mobility and an increase in falls. And there are links in the description below to the studies and the articles I used to put this presentation together. Weak muscles and abdominal fat are a dangerous combination for older people who have difficulty in walking. A study conducted by researchers at the Federal University of Sao Carlos in the state of Sao Paulo in Brazil, in partnership with colleagues at the University College of London in the UK, points to a significant loss of gait speed in older people with these two physical traits. A slower gait is the natural outcome of the aging process, but mobility problems can result if walking speed falls sharply. Everyday activities such as crossing the street before the traffic lights change again becomes increasingly more difficult and there may be a heightened risk of falling as well as gradual loss of independence as these conditions worsen. Chiago de Silva Alexandra a professor at the Department of Gerontology and the Center for Biological and Health Services in the Federal University of Sao Carlos and last author of the paper said, our comparative analysis showed loss of gait speed occurring mainly when abdominal fat and weak muscles were associated. Gait speed didn't decline so sharply in older people who had only abdominal fat or only weak muscles. The study analyzed data from 2,294 individuals aged 60 or more who participated in the English Longitudinal Study of Aging, known as ELSA. These participants were divided into four groups based on their ELSA data for gait speed and muscle weakness. That's known as dynopenia. They were neither dynopenic nor abdominally obese. The second group were abdominally obese only. The third group were dynopenic only, and the final group were both dynopenic and abdominally obese, and none of the participants had problem with mobility or gait speed when the measurements began. Roberta de Oliveira Maximo, a PhD candidate in the Federal University of Sao Carlos graduate program and first author of the paper said, the baseline gait speed for people in this age group without mobility restrictions was defined at 0.8 meters per second. That's 2.88 kilometers an hour or 1.78 miles per hour. In the participants with abdominal obesity and muscle weakness, we observed a loss of 0.15 meters per second in the eight year period. At this rate, there may come a time when they can't cross the street in the time allowed by the traffic lights. Another study published in 2017 and based on data from a different epidemiological study showed that 97.8% from a sample of older people in the city of Sao Paulo were unable to walk fast enough to cross the street while the pedestrian signal was green. However, this study did not analyze the correlations between abdominal fat, weak muscles and gait speed. Professor Alexandre said, in previous studies, we found a correlation between these traits, which are very common in the population, and a heightened risk of falls, alterations to the lipid, carbohydrate, glucose, and cholesterol metabolism, incapacity, and even death. But this is the first study to associate them with mobility. Hence the concept of dynopenic abdominal obesity, which we've been studying in our research group for several years. 
The researchers noted that an accumulation of abdominal fat activates an intense inflammatory cascade, which consumes muscle mass and reduces strength. Abdominal obesity was defined as a waist circumference exceeding 102 centimeters for men and 88 centimeters for women. Dynopenia was defined as a grip strength below 26 kilograms for men and 16 kilograms for women. When detailing the association between fat accumulation, weak muscles and loss of mobility, Professor Alexandre said that a decrease in subcutaneous fat and an increase in abdominal fat are normal as we age. Abdominal fat is more common in men. In women, fat tends to accumulate around the thighs and the hips, but more fat also accumulates in the belly after the menopausal hormone drop. That's when the inflammatory cascade occurs. The buildup of abdominal fat fuels the inflammation, which consumes muscle mass and reduces muscle strength, while also impairing neural control of the muscles. The outcome is a steady loss of strength and an accumulation of fat. Professor Alexandre closed by saying that health workers should measure abdominal fat and muscle strength in clinics and hospitals to predict loss of gait speed. Declining gait speed is an important indicator. It suggests mobility problems, a heightened risk of falls and potential incapacity in older people. The aim of this study was to show the usefulness of this predictor for medical terms. A sizable number of elderly people have weak muscles and accumulated body fat, but both can be corrected by exercise training and diet. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. So they uh, define obesity as a waist circumference exceeding 102 centimetres, that's 40 inches for men, and 88 centimetres, which is 34.6 for women. My waist size, the last review was 91.4 centimetres, which is 36 inches. So 10 centimetres under what they believe is a problem number. Dynopenia was defined as a grip strength, so using a grip meter like the one I use. Grip strength below 26 kilograms, which is 57 pounds for men, and 16 kilograms, 35 pounds for women. My last test showed that my right hand grip strength was 116 pounds, which is 52.6 kilograms. So I'm 26.6 kilos or 58.6 pounds over what they believe is a problem number, which I think both of those metrics are good in my humble opinion. Now I get during the study of the grip strength is a really good proxy for overall fitness and strength, but the metric they used for gait speed, which was waist circumference, I thought was strange. I thought it may have been better if they'd use maybe the six minute test or even the, uh, the daily step count. If you use daily step count and you keep your step count up, you've got the old adage, use it or lose it. You're gonna lose weight, you're gonna reduce your um, your waist circumference, but you'll also know what your what your daily steps are. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of this study. Let me know in the comments below, do you regularly measure your waist and how do you mark up against what they believe to be obese uh, and therefore a problem with, gait, with regards to gait speed? And do you have a grip meter or are you thinking about getting one because it is a good proxy for overall uh, fitness? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.